Hey everyone, uh, it's Mike Lang, Cancer Bridges Survivor Network Coordinator, and uh, today we are here with Sheila Garland, who is a PhD student at the University of Calgary, um, specifically here at the Psychosocial Oncology Department, researching sleep and cancer. And so uh, she's obviously going to have some great information for us, uh, and so I'm really excited to talk to her. Sheila, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your project and what you're doing. Okay, so um, what I've been working on for the past five years is um, looking at investigating different types of programs mm -hmm. to help individuals who have completed their cancer treatment um, if they're suffering with insomnia. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And so how, how common is that problem? How many people suffer from insomnia after finishing treatment? So in our center here, if you look at the prevalence of complaints that patients have completing their um, cancer treatment, you'll look at usually it's um, distress, mm -hmm. pain, and sleep. So mm -hmm. sleep is in the, well actually the fatigue three. is in there, right, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. usually um, within distress it's uh, fatigue, pain, and sleep. Mm -hmm. So definitely one of the most prevalent and usually the, if we want to put a percentage on it, it's about 30% of individuals wow. um, completing their cancer treatments are going to have some difficulty with sleep. Wow, it's quite a few. So, Absolutely. Uh, so I, I know um, a lot of, a lot of you know, in our sort of society where we take a lot of medications and things like that, if people have trouble sleeping, one of the first things they think of, well, I need to go get some sleeping pills or some sleeping aids in that way, some medications. And I know I've had some, tr I had some trouble sleeping when I was on treatment, and that's sort of where I went to right at, right at the beginning. Um, so what would you say with pe to people who thought, sort of, you know, maybe I should just go get a sleeping pill? What would you say to those people? Well, so sleeping medications are not inherently bad. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely have their place mm -hmm. in um, you know, the spectrum of treatment options that are available. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good for people to know that they're not the only option, mm -hmm. and that there are some behavioral things that individuals can start doing right mm -hmm. now that either can prevent sleep, di sleep disturbances from occurring or definitely um, help to remove them if they've already occurred. Cool. Well, yeah, why don't you tell us about a few of those things? I'm sure you've got a lot of them, but yeah. <laughs> sure. So the first thing you want to do, a lot of people think, well, I should keep my bedroom or I should keep my bedtime schedule the same. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is true. But most people will focus on I should always go to bed at the same time every night. Mm. It's actually the opposite. So you should always wake up at the same time every oh. day. Your morning anchor is the most important anchor because mm. that's what's going to determine what time you fall asleep based on something that's called sleep pressure. Mm. Okay. So okay. if I have 24 hours in a day mm -hmm. and I wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning and I normally sleep 8 hours, mm -hmm. right? So if you take away 8 from 24, that gives me 16 hours. So mm. if I wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, 16 hours have to elapse before I'm able to get to sleep again. Mm. Right? So that's wow. why it's the morning anchor which determines your bedtime. Your bedtime. Right? Wow. So, so as long as someone I... focuses on, on getting up at 7.30 every single morning, that's going to help with their sleep cycle. Exactly. Cool. So it's not the bedtime, oh. it's the morning time. So when people that's get a, a bit... big myth, I think, Exactly. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what happens to people is when they get on treatment, they start sleeping in. Right? Oh. But then they start, they keep on trying to go to bed at the same time. Oh, wow. Which is why they start mm. having troubles falling asleep. So, that for example, sense. if we take that, if we take that um, 8 o'clock wake up time, so mm -hmm. 16 hours, that would put you at midnight. Mm -hmm. Right? But let's say somebody used to work a 9 to 5 job, so they would get up at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. and then they would go to bed at 10, right? Keeping their 8 o'clock or 8 hour window. Mm -hmm. But then they don't have to get up to go to work anymore, mm -hmm. so they start sleeping until 8 o'clock, but then they still expect to go to bed at 10, and then wow. they have trouble sleeping. Wow. Well, that's cool. So it's really, you know, it's, huh. it's almost miraculous in its simplicity. It's very, yeah, very it's so, so that's, simple. That's the first thing. So okay. getting up, same time, no matter how much you slept. Okay. Because if you start sleeping in, then that's going to increase the amount of time that it's going to, oh, okay. or increase the time it's going to um, have to elapse before you fall asleep before again. You go to sleep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. First thing. All right. First thing. Wow. Yeah. So she's got a lot more of those. Um, you know what? We might have to make two videos out of this one because I think uh, if you guys want to hear a few more uh, ways that you can fall asleep, uh, I'm just going to try and reel you in with that awesome uh, myth right there and uh, get you to watch the next video with uh, me and Sheila. So thanks for watching. Uh, Thank check out the next one. Uh, Sheila's going to be in it. So see you in a bit.